Hey, this is Mikey Borup with a brand new tutorial, and as you could probably see, I'm doing a movie title, and that movie title is for the movie Pacific Rim. Now, if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel to be sure to get the latest updates and tutorials that I post. Now, before I show you what I came up with and how to do it, let me show you the actual title. So here it is on YouTube, and there's the title okay so I didn't put in this you know footage of a robot but this is what I have title comes in and then in comes the crack and the light and then it blows out to white and um, I want to say that this was built with all native plugins. I didn't use any third-party plugins. I didn't use like Particular or even Optical Flares or Element 3D or anything like that. This is all built done with built-in plugins, so anyone can do it. Now, I do want to say that I am packaging together this project file, and I am going to be making it available. Let's get started. Let's start off with a new composition. Now, first, I used the font of Bank Gothic. It was the one that I found pretty similar to the movie titles, uh, Pacific Rim. And I didn't really want to spend a whole lot of time trying to find the perfect one. This one's pretty darn close. Most people have it. If you don't, I'm sure you can find something similar on defont.com. Um, just, you know, search for something that looks like Bank Gothic. And that will do. Or, really, you could use just any font you want and everything will work just fine but let's use bank gothic pacific rim let's make that white and let's center that up enlarge it okay now before I do anything I want to pre-compose this and this will be where I can just go into this composition and change out the title. So this will be, oh, what did I call it before? Main title. Comp. Now, what I want to do is then take this and I want to add a texture to it. In the video, or in the titles, there's a texture to it. And so I have found just a texture online. Now I need to put this texture below it and then just change the track mat to luma mat and that will create the texture on there. One more time I need to now pre-compose these. So let's select them, pre-compose them and this will be the dupe title because I'm going to duplicate it. Okay so now let's take this and let's duplicate it three times and this is how I'm going to create kind of a 3D look I'm not going to be using third-party plugins um, because it doesn't need it, and I'll, then it makes it easier for everyone. So first, what I want to do is open up these second two, open up the scale, turn off this linking here. This one I'm going to do 99.5, and this one I'm going to do 99. So on the second one, we need to add a filter. We go to Effect perspective bevel alpha and let's turn off this top layer so we can see what we're doing and I want to add, put this at 180 degrees turn this color to yellow increase that intensity edge thickness so it looks about like that and actually, I need to do this on the second layer as well. So I will just copy this effect and put it on this other one. Let's turn this top back on. Now on this top one, I want to add just a matte choker. Because I want this to be kind of choked in a little bit. And really, just the <laughs> default settings is just fine. On this back one, I'm going to add one more layer style, 
and this will be a outer glow. Let's go into the settings and opacity to 100%. Screen is okay and let's give it a little bit bigger of a size. About right there. So I have that at 7. Okay, so that's all we're going to do in this comp. Now also what I did have is So I had some text here, so let's kind of format that. Let's bring it down. Put it about right there, and let's change the color because it was kind of an orangey color. Let's duplicate this. Stick it over here. Let's go. Tutorial. Okay. So this is all we're going to be doing in this composition. Now, then take all of this, pre-compose it one more time. I'm doing lots of pre-comps. And I'm going to call this main title comp. Okay. So we have the main comp, the main title comp. We don't need this dupe comp, but we do need this main title comp. Oh, I could call that one main title comp as well. Let's change the name of that. Title comp. Oh, I'm going to need to change the name of the project. There we go. Title comp. And I don't have to have this dupe comp on. Okay, so now let's start to make the look this like more like the title. If we look back at the one I have made, first off the title is kind of it's kind of tilted back. So what I like to do is to go to my effect distort corner pin and then I just move this top one by 100 this one by 100 the other way this one by 100 out, and this one out by 100 as well. And then that kind of creates the same kind of look. Next, on this we need to add in the, in the video, in the example, let's kind of show this. Again, there's some kind of red light glowing on top of the rest of it. So that is easy to do with another layer style. So I'm going to go to select this main comp, go to layer style, and add what is called a bevel and emboss. So let's go into these layer styles. And with the shadow, I want that to be, I don't want any shadow, so put that all the, all the way down to zero. And with the highlight, let's turn this red and let's rotate this. Let's make it bigger. Okay. Now, that's pretty much the whole title except for the, you know, the whole crack part in the back with the sparks and the and the chasm opening up into the abyss of light. But before we do that, one thing is that the uh the title kind of moved. And that's easy to do. So let's um, just add a scale to it. So let's bring this up at the beginning to about, let's go 115. Keyframe that. Go to about seven seconds because that's about when it'll be turned to white. Let's go to 90%. Okay. So there's that part. Now, next. Now here's the fun part slash hard part. It's creating that kind of that, this whole look. And the hard part was trying to do it with all just built in plugins. So let me show you what I did. First off, let's create a new solid. And I just want this to be a black solid. 
and this is going to be the main light. So I'm going to call it the abyss light. It's going to be the main one right in the background. Click OK. Let's move that to the bottom. And while I'm at it, I'm going to get a new solid and have this be our background. Move that to the bottom, and let's just go ahead and block that so we don't have to worry about that. Now let's click on this abyss light, and what I did was I used a, where are you, generate lens flare. I used a lens flare for the main light. I stuck it right behind the eye. I changed it to the 35 millimeter prime. And in order to create kind of that look, I did a couple of things. First off, let's add a tint. Let's change these colors. This to kind of a dark red. And this to kind of a light yellow. Now, let's add a curves adjustment. And that's really going to bring in the black and have kind of a red, kind of a red outer. Then, from this point, we want to add the liquify effect. So go to effects, distort, liquify. And before I start liquefying, I'm going to bring up my brush pressure and the size. And I need kind of the um, this crack to come down through here. And then there's some kind of some light flares going off here and there. And then let's change to this other. This will shrink it down. Let's bring the brush size back up again, even higher. Kind of shrink this down and basically make it so it doesn't look like just a normal lens flare. Now, from here, I'm just going to add a slight blur. Just a fast blur. About five. Make that 15. Uh, make that 30. Okay. Now, there's kind of the beginnings of this back part. And yeah, let's turn this on to a lower resolution so I can preview it faster. And how it how it works is the crack kind of comes up here and cracks in, and then this kind of goes really bright. And so I want to kind of have this come in till about three seconds and then this is when it's going to start to get really bright and then I want that to get bright over the course of about one second so at four seconds I'm going to come in here and start keyframing my effects so I want to keyframe the liquify the distortion percentage and the lens flare And then let's go back to three seconds. Let's bring that flare brightness down. And the distortion percentage all the way down to zero. And so as it goes through, it kind of grows into that shape. So that's kind of what the that part looks like. Now we want this to kind of fade in. So about right here, let's go click on this, go to the opacity setting, and I just hit T on the keyboard and it brings me right to that. And then right here where it starts, let's just go to zero. Okay, now let's do the crack. So let's add a new layer, a new solid. 
and let's get the paintbrush. I did it a little bit differently in the main titles that I have, but I want to use a paintbrush. And let's draw a crack. Just like that. Now, it's as simple as going into these paintbrush settings. Let's make sure that it starts at the beginning. Go to the brush, stroke options, end. Let's keyframe the end. Let's go back a second and a half. Turn that end keyframe to zero. And then it'll paint on. And then where it says paint on transparent, let's turn that on. So now we've got kind of this, this crack growing into where it goes light. So let's take this and let's give it a name, crack. Let's bring it down underneath the main comp, the main title comp. Okay, now let's take this and let's duplicate it. We're going to call one of them crack, the other one crack light, and let's add an effect to the crack light. Effect, generate, light bursts 2.5. And you can see there's some kind of light going on. So let's bring our playhead back to where it starts. At that point, I want to animate the center of this light burst. So let's click that and put that to at the beginning. Oops, I got it in the wrong spot. That's okay. I can change that. Go into the light burst. And let's move this now to about right there. And let's take that keyframe that I just made and put it over the other one. And now let's go to the end. And let's, we want the light to kind of grow out. So I'm going to bring this to about right there. And then as you see, as it kind of grows, you can see that the light is kind of growing through. Now I want to set this to a different color. So right here it says set color. Let's turn that on. And let's do kind of an orangey an orangey color. And then in this crack, let's change the paint color. Right here it's set to white and let's do kind of a light yellow. And then now I want to duplicate this one more time. Let's turn put that new one underneath it. And I want to just blur this to give it a nice softer edge. So effect, let's do a fast blur. And then let's go into the main and let's change the stroke settings. It's a little bit too thick of a line. Let's make that the blur on the other one. Let's give it more of a blur. Let's make the that line thicker. There we go. So let's see it so far. You can see the crack kind of growing. And then it goes into this main part right here. Now, you can see I kind of drew this in the wrong spot. So let's, let's fix that. Let's grab all three of these that say crack. Let's bring up the rotation. And let's just kind of rotate it until it lines up in here a little bit better. Now I want this to kind of grow a little bit sooner. So what I'm going to do is now keyframe this 
this main light, this abyss light, but the position of it. So I'm going to hit position, and right about here is where I want that. And then right where it's starting to grow, uh, right where it's starting to become untransparent, become opaque, I want to change that position to right at the end. And then now it's going to be kind of growing. All right. It's looking pretty good so far. Now let's add the sparks. So to do that, I'm going to do a new solid. Let's call this sparks. And then go to the effects, stylize. I'm sorry, simulation effects, simulation, particle systems two. And first off, it's going to look kind of crazy. So let's change the settings into the producer. We just need to be one pixel by one pixel. That's fine. Let's change the beginning of it to be right here. The birth rate, let's set that to one for now. Actually, let's turn this off. Let's hide this sparks. And we want the sparks to start right where that starts. So at this point, right when the crack starts, let's have a birth rate of 1. The uh, frame before it needs to have a birth rate of 0. So then on that first frame where it's 1, there's not going to be any. Okay, now before we move forward, we need to keyframe also the position of the producer. So I'm going to go in here and keyframe the producer position. Move forward to where the crack kind of gets to there. And then let's move this sparks up through there. Now, this may look like a lot of sparks, but we're we still got some more to do. So let's go into the particle. Let's change this to a shaded, uh, let's see, faded sphere. The birth size, I want to be 0.10. And then the death size, I want to be 0. Now, let's change the physics. Let's bring this velocity way down. Way down. And let's also change. So I want these sparks to kind of go across really fast before it starts to crack. So I'm going to bring this second keyframe to about right there. And then at this, also at the same time, I'm going to bring the birth rate down to zero. So it's going to be kind of just sparks across to kind of set where the crack's going to go. So those are my sparks. Now, just a couple more things to do. And we've got a finished piece. The next thing is to create kind of a in the middle when it goes bright, I want the words to go bright too. So what I did for that is I'm going to do a new adjustment layer. And let's grab our pen tool and kind of make a similar shape. Now I'm going to go to the effects and let's add a color correction exposure. Now when I add this, let's turn this up really bright and you can see it's affecting the very middle there. But you can also see it doesn't look Ter terribly good so let's add a nice feather maybe bring this down to about three and we need to now keyframe this first we need to do two things we need to parent it 
to the the abyss light because that is moving and then we need to keyframe the intensity so right here where it goes full bright that's where on this adjustment layer we want the exposure to be up to the full that we want it and then down here we want it to be set to zero. And then it brightens. Okay. And then the last thing is I want this to kind of flicker a little bit before completely exposing out. So let's go into the abyss light. Go into where the effects and the lens flare and the flare brightness. So let's just kind of do a little bit of keyframing. Bring that down just a little bit. Bring it up. Bring it down a little bit more. And then from here, it's going to go completely as big and as bright as it can. But you'll also notice that because I distorted it, liquefied it, there's this going on. And I have a couple of layer issues where I've got this crack on top. So let's take this first off and move that right there. And then the second thing is while that does that, I need to scale this abyss layer, this abyss light. So I'm going to hit scale right there. And then just bring that keyframe back. And then let's bring this up to about 117. And then let's see where we're at, which is not enough. Needs to be about 130. So I'm just going to do that and just take that keyframe and move it back over there. And any second now, this is really kind of rendering slow. But there's a lot going on. And OK, now while this is starting to um, blow out with light at this point we want to then fade out our main titles so just bring up the opacity and fade that to zero let's make that fade a little bit longer and end a little sooner All right, let's take a look at it. I'm going to let this render through, and then I'll show you. OK, so here it is. And then in comes the crack and the sparks and the bunch of light. And then goes all white. So that's how I put it together. Now let me show you this one right here. This is the one that I'm going to be providing. I've already got the pa it all packaged together. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Put them in the comments or even connect with me on Google+. Um, that's my preferred social network. And you can just click on this button right here that says Mikey Borup. That will take you right to my Google+, Plus profile. Or feel free to ask in the comments here on YouTube. Now, if you're interested in downloading this project file, um, I have it available on gumroad.com, and I'm selling them for $1. If you don't want to go through the entire tutorial and figure out how to do it, then you can just download the project and plop in your name that way. So this was built using CS6, and so it's going to be saved as a CS6 project file. All you have to do is just click on the link right here that says download the project. It'll take you to the site gumroad.com where you can purchase this project for just $1. Or you can just go through this tutorial and I showed you how to do everything anyways. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out my After Effects Users Google Plus community, which you can link to right on the from the homepage of my channel. There's a link right there. And thanks for watching.